Fancy lad. Fancy lad. Fancy Podcast lad. fancy lad. Fancy Podcast lad. gonna talk to my friends. Fancy gonna share lad. a thought. Gonna have a laugh. That's fancy what I thought. Lad. Fancy lad. The fancy lad. podcast. Fancy lad. Fancy, fancy lad. lad podcast. Uh, yeah. And we are back. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. We are, in fact, back. You know what? What? I think that is a fact. Oh, it is a fact. You said it's in fact, mm-hmm. but I just think it is a fact. It is a fact. And I think that is why I'm able to say in fact, because if you use in fact to lead into something else that isn't factual, you're going to look like a real idiot. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you're right. Real dude head dummy. I know. I do it all the time. I've noticed. Yeah. It's a, use that in fact and literal. Right. Yeah. When people are like, I was filming a trick and I didn't get it. Mm-hmm. And they're like, so did you get that tray flip down El Toro? And I say, in fact, I did get that tray flip down El Toro. Right. And we all know that's a lie. And then when they see the footage that I just slip out and barely ride away mm-hmm. because my truck broke. Right. I have to say, I have to explain to them that I sometimes forget in fact, doesn't mean isn't fact. Right. It, because it's like uh, inflammable. Exactly. Right. So, right. That, see, that's understandable. Right. You know, once you put some context behind it as to why you're making such a stupid uh, mistake. Yeah. Right. And every time I explain to people, no, 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 Tom's just my plutonic friend. Mm-hmm. They always ask me, wait, which one is that? Again, I forget. Does that mean that you want to fuck him? Mm-hmm. Or... And that's where it gets confusing. Yeah, I know. You know? I know. So it's just one of those words. But, you know, it's good to be back here on the podcast. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, shit. What was that? This is a Clown Shoes brand 16-ounce Clementine White Ale. Oh, baby. You know, I like the Clementine White Ale. Oh, yeah. Oh, speaking of which, there was a new ad for the Clementine White Ale. What a coincidence that they sent us one. How They hadn't even heard the episode yet. I know. They somehow knew through the ether, I suppose, that we were looking for a new commercial. Mm-hmm. Sent that right over. Mm. 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 The commercial is almost as good as the beer. It's true. Okay, I mean, really, really be tough to be as delicious. I mean, I feel great. I feel bad for that guy having lost his daughter. Oh, yeah. In the river. Oh, it was his lover. Oh, it was his lover. That's what yeah, I meant. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know, I assume because the southern accent, it was both. But... <laughs> But then I liked it because I looked at the can and I noticed that there was a river mm-hmm. in the background. And I pictured that being the river. That is the river. Of his lover mm-hmm. that he lost. That's the river. Wow. You heard Presumably. It here. You heard it here, folks. But, you know, if if just let me know if our beer cracking or beer drinking is too loud because I don't want to piss off AJ again. Yeah. Oh, that that's a very good point. And we're, listen, we want to want to say first, sorry about last episode, guys. We didn't know our neighbor was gonna, you know, interrupt like that. Seriously. Uh, but you know, he's a pretty nice guy, actually. I know. Nice. We had this whole big Baker Three episode planned out, mm-hmm. where we analyzed every trick, right, frame by frame. Yep. And it was going to be a special five hour episode, and well, not to mention Tony Hawk. Obviously, was gonna he wanted to call in, you know, yeah. because he wanted to. That was gonna come out the same time that he announced, right? The Tony Hawk Pro Skaters one and two remakes. Yeah, which I'm assuming the boss is gonna be in. The boss is in it. Yeah, yeah. and uh, which is weird because it's like I don't know if they know what happened. Yeah, I know. Who are they gonna do? Do you think that we could just get the checks, the royalty checks, and say that we're gonna give them to Zombie Reynolds, and then we just take his zombie hand and forge his zombie signature, then just make that fucking sweet, sweet coinage, bro? Oh, my God. Between the fucking Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 remake money, the fucking Vans money, and that Baker's Boy distribution money, ooh, we're going to be making them sweet, sweet coinage. Baby, baby, baby. Cha-ching, cha-ching. I'm thinking this podcast thing is finally about to pay off, but alas, it didn't because we were interrupted. By AJ. By our neighbor. Awesome. Yeah. No, follow your own age. You know, you're listening. I know. We know. Weather, he, weather through the walls. We know you can hear us. All right. Don't poke us with any hairless mice again. Okay. We don't want that. Well, well, 
I'm just going to speak for myself. I kind of I kind of get coming around to it. Yeah. Anthony Junior Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Yeah. Of course. Of yeah. course. Duh. Yeah. But yeah, I tuned into his uh podcast Celebrity Butts. It was uh pretty good. Dude, I was very surprised. Yeah. Very well produced as well. Right. I'd be interested to take a look at his uh studio sometime. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it looks pretty similar to this one, especially from the description of the the Muppet posters. Right. Twelve foot um, ceilings, and presumably there's also a hole in the wall there. That would make a lot of sense, you know. Yeah, um, but yeah, we're gonna have to check it out sometime, dude. And I noticed that he was on a network, same fucking network that puts out Office Hours with Tim Heidecker. AJ is, yeah. AJ's podcast, Celebrity Butts, all things comedy. Yeah, yeah that's the that's the network. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. He didn't tell us it was, you know, he kind of described it more like it was like a, a documentary, you know, or like a documentary or, you know, just like f- facts about celebrity butts. Right. Well, that's I mean, when you know AJ as well as I do, or, mm-hmm. um, you know how humble the guy is. Right. OK. So he didn't want to be like also. Yeah. He's like, it's bad enough that he's six foot eight. Yeah. Weighs three hundred forty five pounds. Mm-hmm. He didn't want to also be gloating that his podcast is wildly more successful than ours that is and that's strange because we're super successful despite the fact that that no networks will touch us with a 10-foot pole no which is very strange no i keep sending the poles out i know and then just getting near them i know Eh? Eh? no touching not even a 10-foot hairless mouse no oh do you think how that's how aj got them you think he was using a 10-foot hairless mouse instead of a pole i think so fuck i have to find one of those yeah we don't know how deep these walls go that's true we know how how high the ceilings are. We don't know how uh, how deep these walls are, though. Yeah, we'll have to explore sometime. But uh, so he's on the same network network as uh, Office Hours. Yeah, it was crazy. So it got me it got me uh, poking around a little bit. Oh yeah, and I just said, you know, I never heard of this show, mm-hmm. Office Hours with Tim Heidecker. Right. Office Hours Live with right. Tim Heidecker. Live. Live. I tuned in. Mm-hmm. Lo and behold, it actually was live. It was live. It was live. What well, was it? Was this this last Saturday night? No, it's today. Today it was live. Yeah, Th- they know it's Thursday, right? Oh, they're in California, so it's Saturday night there. Yeah, right? exactly. Okay. okay, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. all right. So they're doing it live Saturday night where they are. Yeah, and you're never gonna guess who the fucking guest was on there, dude. Ooh, can I take a guess? Yeah. Uh... Michelle Obama. You know, I didn't tune in for the whole episode. She mm-hmm. very well could have been on there because oh. they were taking multiple guests. Oh. So I could be right. You could be right. Yes. I fucking nailed it. Um, there was uh, Jenny Lewis, who I don't really know. Oh. I thought you might. I I know the name. Oh, okay, yeah. Because she's a musician. Right, right, right. I know you're a musician. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know if you'd know who she was. I feel like she wears a polka dotted dress. I, f- I think that she was wearing a polka dotted dress, okay, actually. Well, okay. Then I'm thinking of the, the right person, maybe? Probably. I know she's not Zoe Dacian now. Absolutely not. Okay. And also not Lizzie Kaplan. Mm, not sure. Okay. But she is Jenny Lewis. Exactly. I'll have to look into it. Yeah, you should. But yeah, no, right at the beginning of the episode, I tune in. As and, you do. And lo and behold, our arch nemesis... Jason oh, Dill oh, you, oh, was on the episode. I was just about to say, don't even fucking say his name. Jason oh, motherfucking Dill. Dill. Are you serious? Yeah. He was on their podcast. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, After Jesus. all the times we fucking asked him to be on our podcast, mm. too scared to come on, obviously. Clearly. Obviously. Oh, man. That's because, I mean, he's okay to go on a comedy podcast, but he doesn't want to come on you know, skateboarding's number one podcast to be hit by actual hard hitting questions. I know. I yeah. know. He doesn't want the heat. He doesn't want the heat. I don't think you could stand the heat, to no. be quite honest with you. No. Me. And He's... quite frankly, the heat is on. Oh, the heat is on. Yeah. And which is weird because it's like seventy degrees out. Yeah, you're right. I think it's kind of wasteful actually. Actually yo, Zebo. Oh, he's turning it down. Oh yeah, he got a cool app on his phone. He can control the thermostat with his app. I was gonna say Dude, Zebo's like a fucking dad. He gets pissed when you touch the fucking thermostat. I know. That's why I asked him. I yeah. know you can't get you can't get near the fucking thing without him trying to knock you out. Well, he also put that whole uh, encagement around it. Right. Yeah. So you really can't get close to it. Right. It was like a um, 
sort of chastity belt. It is like a chastity belt, yeah. Yeah. It was exactly like the chastity belt from Robin Hood Men in Tights. That's the one I was thinking of. God, I think about that one all the time. <laughs> Dude. Are you kidding me? How could you not? Whenever I say that word, that's exactly what pops in my head. With that uh, guy that played, uh, that guy whose name Peter knows. Yeah, yeah, from The Crush. Yeah, exactly. Felicia Silverstone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And from, from Saw. Yeah. Yeah. And from The Princess Bride. Right. Which Fisk hid under the seat of the van. I know. Which maybe I've seen once. Oh, man. Great film. Yeah. Maybe I should watch it again. I feel like it's one of those films, though, where it's like if you didn't see it growing up and then you see it now, you're like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, it's pretty good, but I think I kind of didn't see it growing up. Yeah, you're going to miss the nostalgia factor. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it's got it's got uh, Fred Savage. Oh. Uh, it's got uh, Peter Falk. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and it's got that dude. What's his name? Wallace. David Foster Wallace. Mm, no. Mm. Mm. Maybe. Maybe he's in it. Who knows? Mm. Andre the Giant. Well, you know, I love that whenever Abe refers to his uh, fans as his little monsters, mm-hmm. I love that, you know, in my head, all I could think about every time is Fred Savage. Right. Howie Mandel. Mm-hmm. Little monsters. Mm-hmm. Crawling out of that hole on the beach in the end scene. Oh, yeah. Q Road to Nowhere by Talking Heads. Mm. And then I just go to this blissful state. Right. I start floating. Uh huh. Feel like I'm in water. We're talking about Rhode Island? Mm hmm. Yeah, okay. Mm hmm. Been there. Very nice. <laughs> Abe's favorite state. Oh, my God. It would be. <laughs> I know. Oh, man. He's mentioned it on several occasions. <laughs> God. Imagine being uh, someone mm-hmm. and being adamant about declaring that Rhode Island is your favorite state. It would make a little bit of sense if he were from Rhode Island. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. But what what experience does he have in Rhode Island? What the fuck happened to him there? Where, where, That's did he so go to, great. I bet he went to Block Island. I don't know what that is. Some little fucking fancy island off of Rhode Island. Mm. I bet he went there for a lovely weekend getaway. That posh motherfucker. It was nice. We rented scooters. Mm-hmm. 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 That's right, Abe. I know all about you. Yeah. Yell exit Abe Dubin. Love you. Love you, bro. Love you, buddy. Love you, Dub. Hope you're doing good. Hope you're doing well, dude. And I wonder if you are going to let Fisk camp in your backyard while he drives to Florida. I'm just curious. I know the cold COVID thing's going on, (laughs) so I understand both arguments. COVID aside. You still probably would. (laughs) Really? Seriously? Yeah. Abe, we're just telling it how it is. Hey, we're searchers of truth and beauty, okay? You know, we're, we're, you know, I'll have to I'll have to bring this up to Abe sometime. Really get to the bottom of this. Yeah, sorry, Abe. Sorry, bro. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's a crispy one right there. But you know, you mentioned how Jason Dill uh hasn't been on this podcast. Right. Which and is he, weird. And he was on a comedy podcast. And he's a skateboarder. And he's a skateboarder. He wouldn't mm-hmm. go on the number one skateboard podcast, but he went on this lesser known podcast, apparently called the nine club the uh, i'm sorry what was that i've never heard of it either until the office hours mentioned it what's it called it's called the nine club uh the mic must be breaking up because every time it sounds like you're saying the nine club but that's yeah. like yeah that's like the dumbest name i've ever heard so that can't be it no yeah like the number nine okay all right cool that sounds like a good podcast with chris roberts who the you know the ex-girl Oh, sponsored okay. skater. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, Switch with Manny. From Girl Chocolate. Yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Switch with okay, Manny. Yeah, he, did, he did the well balanced nose grinds mm-hmm. and 5.0s. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, I love a good well balanced nose grinder 5.0. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Love him. Mm-hmm. That's how he ended up on the Office Hours podcast, was that he mentioned mm-hmm. on the Nine Club podcast how he likes the Office Hours podcast. Oh. So you just have to mention other podcasts when you're on a podcast. Exactly. And then you get onto that podcast? Yeah. So I'm thinking as an experiment, we just mention just a few podcasts and we'll just see who bites. All right. Well, number one podcast that comes to mind, Fancy Lad Podcast. Okay. Number two that comes to mind, probably the biggest mm-hmm. podcast in the world, mm-hmm. Podcast Godfather, Conan O'Brien. Well, Conan needs a friend. Like, Conan needs you, a friend. You need, you need to say the actual name oh, of the yeah, podcast I'm sorry, if you want to get on it. I was just saying the podcaster. So, yeah, I love Conan needs a friend. 
Uh, me too. That's why I got into skateboarding. Conan needs a friend. Yeah. Okay, next. And, yeah, and, ooh, can't get enough of that White Stripes intro song. Mm-mm-mm. God, I could listen to that for episode after episode. Oh, boy. it's It wasn't annoying when it first came out. Right. Thanks for choosing that song, Conan. Especially because it wasn't ruined after being in Napoleon Dynamite soundtrack, too. Definitely not. Not like everything featured in that movie. Yeah, it didn't get old after, you know, one year of high school. Mm -mm. Okay, I guess you had to have been there. Yeah, maybe. No, and you know what? I'm just going to toss this one out here. Uh, The Joe Rogan experience. Oh, my God. I would go on that, but I'm not eating any fucking of those spiders, man. Mm. I don't want to eat any tarantulas. Mm. Those psychedelic spiders? Uh, I mean, I'll try one of those guys. Nibble a leg or two, mm. you know? Mm. I ain't sticking no cockroaches in my mouth. No, no. I mean, split them up, maybe. Roach? I mean, if he wants to get into a UFC fight with me, mm-hmm. I'm down. Oh, I'm, it's on. 100%. Oh, what if he wants to announce a UFC fight between us? Because you know I've been doing seven and a half push-ups. Every day? Every day. That's insane. Matt tells me to double it. So I just do, I, now I do a, round, a nice 15. So I'm ready. Oh, jeez. 15 a day. Are yeah. you doing them in a row or are you just doing like every, every like when, you know, every 15 hours, one an hour? About, I, I switch between one and then two every hour. It's good not to do too many. Yeah. You don't want to get worn out. Exactly. You know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, my pick, so that was, you said Conan. Mm-hmm. I said Joe Rogan. Oh yeah. So now, oh, I'm tossing no. it back to you. To oh, tossing it back one. to me. Oh, well, I mean, you know, I'd love to get on the Office Ladies podcast. I'm not familiar. Could oh, you... it's just just a bunch of people from the office rewatching the office and talking about the office. And they're ladies. Well, the the host are two ladies from the office. Mm. So it's two of the people that are on the show mm-hmm. that rewatch the show. Oh uh, yeah, oh uh, yeah, and talk about the show. Oh mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Which two characters are they? Uh the the one the the one main lady and then the other lady, the the meaner lady. Those two chicks that that. Uh, that John Ryan guy wants to fuck? Not Meredith. It's not Meredith. I know that. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. You know what I'm talking about, yeah, right? Yeah, John Ryan, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The two chicks that John Ryan guy is trying to bang. Only one of them. Oh, okay. And then the one that uh, the, the guy with the weird head was, was trying to bang. Yeah. 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 But yeah, great podcast. You know what? I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, fingers crossed that that's the one that we get on there. Oh, man. Can you think of any others? Um. Well, you know, I would say Office Hours with Tim Heidecker, but, you know, Dill was just fucking on there. So mm-hmm. I'm going to say just for this. I can't think of anything else. I'm just going to say the Poundcast. Oh, the Poundcast. Yeah. Oh, that's a podcast. Starring Doug Lussenhop. Ooh, the one and only. Yeah. Dougie Lussenhop is what they call him. Yeah, yeah. And often, I think his co-host is uh, Brent Weinbach. Oh, I love Brent. Yeah. Mind Jack. Yeah, exactly. Great guy. Oh, fantastic. Great guy. guy. Funny guy. Yeah, no, I like to think of you as my Brent Weinbach, you know? It's my DJ Doug Pound. Thank you. Is it because that one time I, I made that guy... Spit come out of his mouth? Yeah, exactly. Oh, the mind yeah. jack time. Yeah, I, mi- I mind jacked the dude. Yeah. It was sick. But yeah, speaking of all this mind jacking, yeah. Um, what do you say we take a quick break and just, I don't know, see if any of these podcasts actually bite? That's not a bad idea. We have we did we did yell a few out. Also, I guess we should say, we, I, we did mention celebrity butts earlier anyhow. Oh, we did. So, you know, but if AJ's got that much clout in the podcast. Dude, that's what I'm fucking so cool. saying, dude. Yeah. So we'll throw celebrity butts in there too, but. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll throw that out there. We'll let the, uh, you know, let the podcast goblins do their work, and we'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I'm just gonna grab a quick beer. And, oh, uh, that sounds like a great idea. I'm gonna grab one too, and then maybe uh, be right back. How about? Oh, that sounds perfect. All right. All right. Uh, yeah. Life as a southern sheriff can be pretty taxing. Taxing on the mind, taxing on the body, and taxing on the soul. That's why when I'm feeling my most decaffeinated and dehydrated, I reach for a mocha sombrero. Mocha sombrero. 
A Mexican style chocolate stout with additions of coffee and vanilla. All right, now I'm trying to do the script here. All right, you know, if you're just going to keep doing that. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, it's got coffee. It's got coffee and it's got vanilla. I don't care if you're doing the math. It's got coffee and vanilla. And it's a stout recipe. And uh, the malt flavors. The uh, the sweet vanilla. Uh, Jesus. Oh, my God. You know, this is very distracting. Very distracting. You know, if you want to know more about Mocha Sombrero from Clown Shoes Beer, why don't you go ahead and visit uh, clownshoesbeer.com. Go on now, get it. Uh, yeah. And we are back. Oh, yes, we are. And, you know, I just want to apologize to AJ once again if we didn't spend enough time saying that we were back at the beginning of the episode. That's why I wanted to take this time to just reiterate that we're back. That we're back. Yeah, I know we agreed with him on a solid 15. Right. So this is going to add to that first segment. Okay, cool. Where not only are we back from the break, I want you to know that we're back as a whole. Right. So yeah, we're back from the break. As an entity. And if you haven't picked up on it by now, right? we have been back for the last 20 minutes or so. Yeah. And we'll remain back. For the duration of this podcast, yeah. at least. Yeah, at least. At least. And then who knows? Yeah, you're right. You don't know what happens in the dark. I have no idea. I keep my eyes closed. Yeah. I don't want to know. I still, you know what? I'm still, I just can't get over this whole Jason Dill on the Tim a Heidecker show thing. So they heard him mention it on this other, that he mentioned their podcast. Right. On that other skateboarding podcast, the, um, was it the, the six and sevens? Yeah. Did you get, did you see, the, did you see it? The, uh, what the, the, the office the, hours? Yeah. I did watch a little bit of that. Yeah. Oh, you saw, so you saw Jason Dill on there? I saw Jason Dill on there. I loved watching him on there mm-hmm. because it, the tables were so turned from when I met him. Oh, who's the cool guy now, Dill? Who's the cool guy now, Dill? Mm. When Tim Heidecker was like, all right, Dill, all right, listen up. You don't have to try to be funny because uh-huh. clearly you are not, okay? We got the comedy covered here. Yeah, buddy. Mm. Mm. And then he was like, ah, look at him, my single pop. <laughs> He's fanning out. Exactly. It's nice to see him fan out. Though. Exactly. You know? That adds more just saying, human. I'm just saying it was a humbling experience. Oh, yeah. And I felt better about myself. Right. After your interaction with Dill, which we've documented many times. Many times. You can go back. You can listen to the episodes. Yep. And we'll just leave it at that. Oh, yeah. The clips, the descriptions clearly describe what is in every episode. Yeah. So there shouldn't be any any problem finding the one. They describe what's in it. They describe who's in it. Mm-hmm. Bada bing, bada boom. No problem. Just take a quick scan. Easy squeezy. And uh, wait a minute. The fuck? You hear that? Shit. You feel like it's, we're being too loud again? Dude, this better not be fucking AJ fuck, again, dude. Dude, I told you. Oh, my God. Shit. All right. Sorry, guys. All right. We should answer this. All right. Hold on. Hi. It's Fancy Dad. Uh, yeah, hello, you're on the Fancy Lad podcast, this is really weird getting a call out of the blue. Oh, I, I lucked out. It's cool that I got through. Uh, can I ask who's calling? Yeah, this is Doug, your friend Doug. Remember me? Oh, Doug Lussenhop. Oh, shit. Yeah. Dude, we were just talking about you. Dude, we Beetlejuiced your ass. You were talking about me? What were you saying? We- uh, 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 well... We we were saying um, how we really enjoyed how you were talking to Jason Dill today on the uh, the old Office Hours podcast there. Oh, what a what a treat that was! You know, the legend, the Dill man, the legend, the Dill man. It was weird to see because we've been trying to get Dill on our podcast for quite some time, um, and he stopped answering my calls after he was supposed to get me on to season four of Love, right? And I just kept hitting him up about it. Uh, he must have blocked my number or something. Oh, well, you know, to be honest, I didn't know Dill. I didn't know much about Jason Dill, to be honest. I I heard he was on the Nine Club, and then he mentioned office hours, that he liked office hours. So then 
I started getting all these DMs from people being like, Jason Dill gave you guys a shout out. You got to get him on office hours. And I, you know, I, uh, I'm, uh, I'm aware of Jason Dill. You know, I knew, I remember back in the day he was on like, Alien Workshop or something? That is accurate. Oh, yeah. The but, fo- during photosynthesis. Is that accurate? Oh, yeah. That is accurate. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, um, like right around 2000. Well, even after that, but yeah. But no, he seems like a nice I'm sorry. He's not returning your calls. You know? I figured you were the connection there. I didn't know. I was uh, just so curious about it. I don't know how he became aware of Austin Towers, but ah. who knows? I didn't, I didn't ask. Right. Right. Well, I also liked how um, he still confused the, um, we were having that conversation the other day. This must happen to you all the time when I say, I'd love to come by and skate your half pipe sometime. And you have to constantly be um, clarifying that it's actually a quarter pipe. I know, I know. And it's not a pipe. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. He called it a half pike. I was like, oh, that idiot. It is is not a fish, you dumbest. Dumbest. Well, he doesn't know anything about skateboarding, so I'll let him have a pass. He can have a pass on that. Oh yeah, he can have a pass. He doesn't. He, he doesn't need to know anything. What's up with you guys? Are you guys uh, skating in the quarantine or what? Yeah, yeah, we're skating in the quarantine, but you know, we all like pretty much live together, so we figure that's already our safe zone, our little bubble, our little bubble. So. We just go out and skate together and try to find where there's no one else that's going to uh, come into contact with us. But it it doesn't always work. A bum the other day uh, kept uh, tr- trying to take Tom's board and uh, kept accusing him of and us of stealing his rolling papers because he was, uh, you know, drugged out with his girlfriend and he kept threatening that he had a gun. Oh, uh, yeah, that was fun. Oh, you don't want that. You know, I hate when that happens. Yeah, that was that was. That was really a bummer because uh, it's been quite a while before since I've been harassed for skating. And it's really just been happening a lot the last few weeks. Right. And it's never quarantine related. Yeah. It's just people are going fucking nuts and just need to yell at someone for something. Yeah. Well, needless to say, we left. Yeah, I noticed. Uh... Oh, go ahead. We left in a timely manner. Yeah, you don't have a chance. You know, you just in another spot. What I, I was going to say, what I noticed is that. The parking lots in little zones by the house are have way fewer cars and are kind of like better for skating. But yeah, there is an uptick in sort of people that are like living out, living in their cars and hanging out. Mm. Bum type, bum type people. Right. But, but um, yeah, I've been using the time to scout out a DIY. You guys have a DIY on my you. I always see it in the videos, don't you? Yeah, yeah. The DIY that we made in the rink there, which they said they were going to actually turn into an actual skate park, but um, it got put on hold because they said it wasn't part of the uh, essential construction of the state, which makes sense. Uh, well, what's, I hope it's not another big dig situation. Exactly. Oh, my God. Oh, don't get us started. Don't on the get us started. <laughs> Listen, we spend every almost every episode talking about the big dig, so I'd really hate to go into it again. All right, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't want to go there. We're gonna have to save it for the next big dig special. Hmm. Yeah, um, but yeah, I saw the curb you were making over that uh, over at that DIY. Yeah, You've been building looking, there a while. Thing was looking tasty. Yeah, hey, I got a question before I get into that. Do you guys ever use the term "big dig energy"? Oh, uh, dude, but we're about to. I think you should big dig. All right, you got to patent that before we release this episode, Doug. Yeah, big dig energy. Big that's, dig that's energy. That's like a local uh, box. Yeah, it could be kind of a Boston kind of like phrase. Or something. But you got it. You have to be of a certain age to have big dig energy, because otherwise you weren't even <laughs> around for the big dig. You know, it's true. <laughs> well, you could just have the energy of it. You know, that's true. You could have the energy of it, but I don't want a lot of. I don't want a bunch of fifteen-year-old kids running up to me yelling, "I got big dig energy! I got big dig energy!" Yeah. <laughs> Because then, you know, onlookers are going to see that. People are going to start to talk. Yeah, you don't want big, big energy. Oh, you don't want it. You know, it's a negative thing. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was a trying uh-huh. time for all of us. Yeah, I'm, uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, I found, uh, I've been experimenting with concrete, and uh, I made a little bank rack in the middle of the night with a friend. Oh, sick. Um, 
but I think we didn't use the right kind of concrete or we didn't put the right amount of water, too much water. We're using the regular, or, well, you, you got to use the regular concrete and then the mortar mix just to finish it off. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, so we're still figuring that out as we go. But, um, I think the other problem is we built it at night, like 10 PM, 10 or 11 PM. And then the next morning I drove past and there's a dude already skating it. And it was like, it hadn't mm-hmm. even cleared for, you know, 24 hours, yeah. 10 hours, 12 hours. Yeah. You got to put and like, so uh, then I looked at it the next, yeah, I looked at it the next day and it was already getting like, it was starting to like crumble. Mm. So I don't know what I'm supposed to do. You didn't set up a bunch of cones around it with caution tape? I got to do that. I guess I got to do the caution tape because people just start skating it immediately. And this dude didn't even have shoes on. He was barefoot skating it. Barefoot? During COVID? Jamie Thomas? Jesus Christ. I know. Can you believe it? God, that's ridiculous. That is. You don't need all those open wounds on the bottom of your feet getting exposed to the that fresh, fresh Crete. <laughs> yeah. So... so uh, I'm going to try to fix that up. I'm going to put, I'm going to try to, the bank was kind of steep. I'm going to try to like cut another little, uh, form, drill it to the side mm-hmm. and, uh, re, you know, try to touch it up this weekend and see how that goes. And for our listeners who aren't familiar with your skate history, you know, you're mainly a transition skater. You, uh, you know, you got those dipped Smiths. Dipped. I've been noticing the Dip Smith. Yeah, you do yeah, have a well, Dip Smith. And the Decked Rock. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, that's what I grew up seeing backyard half pipes that we made ourselves. I like it all. But you ramps are fun. Street's good, but then I, that's where I hurt myself more. Yeah, I always hurt myself more on the, the ramps. When I after when I get older, I'll start padding up, but I don't. I just don't feel right at the age I'm at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, w- I need to go full pad. I want to wear hockey pads too around my ass and my hips. Oh and like yeah, soccer pads, soccer pads on the shins, elbow pads, wrist guards. Mm-hmm. Um, probably like one of those motorcycle uh, jackets that you with the spine guard. All of it. And you know, I'm going to talk more about skating, but I just want to say I cannot believe how. Uh, the drops on office hours, how quick you are with them. I was, I wanted to ask that too. I, I just don't, it doesn't even make sense to me how we, quickly something's mentioned and how quickly a drop is laid. And I understand a magician never reveals his secrets. Yeah. But how the fuck do you do it? <laughs> do you, ha- do you have all of those ready to go? Or are you just fucking Google searching them? What the hell is going on with you? Um, well, I used to do a podcast maybe like eight years ago, a long time ago with Neil Brennan and Motion Thatcher. And I was like the guy doing drops on that podcast. So I did that for two or three years. So I kind of had practice and I had a, I had a drop library that was building and growing and growing. Mm-hmm. So what I would do, I'll give you my, well, I'll give you my secret, but then now I have a new secret now, but I'll give you my old secret. All right, cool. My old secret was I had so many drops that I couldn't just build a soundboard because I'm going to access see, the soundboard fits like 30 or 50. Right. So I had like hundreds, hundreds of drops for any occasion. So I would just have a folder, and if somebody says, mention something, I'll type in the keyword in the finder, mm-hmm. and then it'll just pop up the relevant drops. Then I just hit the switch bar. You know, I can hit a space bar and it'll play a file. Right, right. Uh, my secret. Like while editing to play the video. Yeah, but in the within the finder, you can just like click on it. Instead of opening it up in in whatever, quick time, you, you can just hit a space bar and it'll just play in the finder. Oh, uh, okay. And it'll just so play the was, audio without that, that was opening it. That's your that's your secret. That was my first secret. I have a new secret that's now. Secret. Right, right, right. Which... which which involves newer software and kind of like knowing you just kind of like know where things are and then you just pop right to them. You can go to um, zones and you know where different categories of drops are. Mm-hmm. And, uh, pretty much just like mum- uh, muscle memory kind of thing. You just kind of remember where they are. Well, I got to say, it's my favorite part of the podcast. Oh, thank you. It's really great. 
I love how much it seems to uh, aggravate uh, Tim sometimes too. <laughs> Like genuinely, yeah, where he's it, like, "Yeah, you and Vic, it, you you kids have your fun real quick. They got to get it out of their system." <laughs> yeah, we got to get it out. It's too much fun. Hey, you got to get it out how you can, you know. That's right. Yeah, but also, I was looking for. I want to ask you this too, because I was looking for the sponsor me tape, which was the first time I ever actually. Well, I didn't know that you did the G.I. Joe stuff when I was growing up, so I didn't know that was you, but that was technically the first time I saw your comedy, but the first time I saw your stuff, I and mean, besides like when you were on Tim and Eric live as the character, was the Sponsor Me tape, the skating Sponsor Me tape video, which I could not find on YouTube. Uh, did I just pull the deck on? I was going to ask you if it was on your page, because I, I couldn't find it anywhere. Oh, shoot. Well, that's the kind of thing I don't... I don't really know. Um, I never uploaded that. That was on Super Deluxe, the first, first version of Super Deluxe, like 10 years ago, yeah. or maybe even longer. And, and, then they, and then it was on, maybe it was on like adultswim.com. It was in their library of videos or something. But yeah, I got to go through the archives, re-upload all that stuff. It's better... Yeah, at least the uh, at least the whatever. at least the two wet crew uh, skate video that has the ominous dude giving you props in the background repeatedly. Yeah, at least that's still yeah, that's still important. kicking. That was ge- that was genius. Random dude giving you props. Well, you we've all seen that guy. We've all feared him. <laughs> he haunts all of our nightmares. But you know. I was thinking, I was just going to mention this too, because it's weird that we've had comments so many times for Fancy Lad being like, oh, these dudes are like the Tim and Eric of skating. These dudes are like the Eric Andre of skating. But I don't really get that. I mean, the only thing that I can even think it possibly is that the similar sort of, now just a couple of things that aren't even that similar, but with the editing style, Sometimes when we when we did it before when we started we would have a lot more repetition variation where we would use like every take but we would have quick cuts to just cut from every single one. Yeah, um, I don't think I don't see that. I don't listen to those haters. Those are people who would have an unsophisticated uh, eye for, for the art that you make. They just like to lump it into something else that was well made and funny. Yeah, you just you guys do. Um, you, you're, you know, you have uh, funny editing, and uh, you know, I, I don't see that and think, oh, you can do it on the off of everything. I just keep doing your own thing. Yeah. You know, we all are inspired by stuff we like, but it's not like a rip off or anything like that at all. You guys are doing your own shit. Right. For sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I just never really understood it. I feel like people they they need to make a connection somewhere, even when there's not one. Right, it's they just, just like need human to love nature. You into, right, yeah, it's like if they don't know that much about something, they just have to take that to lump it into. Something they're familiar with. I was curious about this because um, I always see Eric Andre wearing skate shirts. Does he actually skate? <laughs> have you skated with him, or does he just like the culture? Uh, he doesn't skate. He wears skate shirts. Uh, I think people, people set, like love to give him free stuff, and if if it looks cool, he'll just wear it. So um, he also has a skateboard. I saw I, I, I opened for him a few times last year, and when we were in Detroit backstage, he had like a deck. It was like an Eric Andre model. Oh wow! I was like, this is. <laughs> was it a send help? I wanted it, but I think it was Birdhouse. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Oh, because he was in the yeah. bird that birdhouse video that yeah. I never saw. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I saw that clip. Actually, I might have seen the whole video. I definitely saw that part. And that made me think that he skated even more because they put out a pro model for Tom Green back in the day. Right. Right. Well, Tom Green actually did skate. Right. right. That, yeah. Right. That's where we're like, oh, this dude must you actually know. skate as well. Yeah. And Although, so I just yeah. assumed yeah. every alternative comedian skated. You, Eric Andre, Tom Green, <laughs> Bam Margera, Owen Wilson, Owen Wilson, and now Jack Black. But speaking of uh, Ken Hell, you know, they sponsored me based on that fake sponsored me video I made, and I've been friends with Todd ever since. And 
he keeps talking about putting out a pro model for me, so I'm having a pro model. Oh, that would be sick. Hey, should do you still skate? Do you still skate for them? I mean, you still get. I, if you need a board, you still get. Stuff. Yeah, I was gonna say, if you need a board, you right. still get boards from them. Yeah, he's just like my buddy. I went with him, him and Sean Cliver last year. I went to London with those guys for their. They did an art show, like a skate art show at the House of Band. Oh, word! Yeah, yeah. I tagged along, like DJ the party. Which was kind of hilarious that they had a budget for me to come out there to like play some music that no one even cared about. Well, people just wanted to go check out the art and hang out. But, yeah. Um, no, that was that was that was a rad time. What's uh? But um, I need to I need some new I need some new tricks. I need to put out a part when I go pro. So I'm gonna have to like. Oh, you know, I wish you guys could come out here and make me some weird spring loaded boards or something that I could. That'd be good. I mean, if it wasn't for the COVID, you know, I would say uh, we'd be out there in a jiffy. Yeah. We could skate that half of a half pipe. Oh, weren't you going to come out here? I we I had plans to go out there with Matt. We were going to go to the barracks, and I figured while we were there, we could skate your half of a half pipe. Yeah. But that all got ruined. Well, let's put that on a check because we should come out here. COVID bullshit won't last forever, you know? Yeah. And keep us trapped in our in our DIY forever, we can get out and explore the world. No, COVID can't keep us apart. No, 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 no. <laughs> the, did the, uh, I think I remember seeing the Warble guys skate your ramp though, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like, um, I don't know how that happened. I'm friends with this dude, Andrew, who's in the band Cobra Man, and he's basically the music right, the right, Warble yeah. videos. Yeah, exactly, yep. Cobra Man. And he was like, yeah, he was like, um, we should. Uh, I know these guys that want to skate your ramp. I met uh, Tom. Uh, Dull. Mall. Mall. That's what I meant. Yeah, the Mall Tom brothers. Mall. Yeah, Tom Mall, Steve yeah. Mall, yeah. Dave Tom, Mall. The, film, the filmer. I started. Yeah, I met the filmer Tom. He, they're all really cool. Yeah. But um, so somehow I was like, yeah, come. He was like, he wanted to shoot something. I was like, yeah, come on by. I didn't really know much about those guys at all. Um, so Cookie came over and. Steve Mole. Yep. And they they started skating, and I was like, holy shit. Like, I thought it was just some local friend of a friend coming to yeah. skate. These guys were insane. They were, like, so fucking good taking up pieces of plywood and laying them on the dirt and, like, doing shit, skating all these different parts of, like, the retaining wall and stuff. And uh, Well, they're a bunch of, they're like, a bunch oh, of Vermont boys. Yeah, the New Englanders. Yeah. yeah, so they're all they're all used to skating plywood and like off of like sheds and shit. True patriots. True patriots. Yeah, they're they're, they're like really good. And then I don't know. He filmed me doing a couple of goofy things. I didn't really think much of it. And I went to the, the premiere, and I'm getting in there for like two seconds, and I was thinking like, dude, I fucked up. Could have been. I could have had like a few tricks in this video, but I was like, more like. More of just hanging out watching these guys, like, you know, destroy it back there. I was, like, kind of like, these guys are too good. I'm not going to be able to change it over. I just want to watch. Oh, yeah. And then, then I, I was like, ah, oh, I could have had at least a couple tricks in here, except this dumb, like, I don't know, like, swung out on a rope or something. I don't know what I did, but. Yeah. Well, that was my shot. I didn't. I didn't really know what the world was until like after that day. And then I was like, "Who are those guys?" And then I was like, "Oh shit! Okay, they're like pros or something." Yeah. But so I mean, they're I still. Yeah. They're just. A, they're just a bunch of really sweet boys, you know. Yeah, and they're just a so crew. Is, so yeah. is Man Ramp too. I mean, yeah, they got their their board company. You know, they're they're not. A, they're not. I would. You know, they're not your Jason Dill pro, but right. they well, they well Cookie though, Cookie Dough. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he's pro on element. Oh, he, really? Yeah, he's pro on yeah. element. So that's yeah. like, I mean, Nyjah's pro for element, right? right, right. So he's like fucking next level shit. I mean, not to put down Warble, I prefer to watch Warble, honestly. Oh, me too. They're they're, they're all amazing. Yeah, like the and you could tell that they're having a bunch of fun. Ah, the best fun. And uh, yeah, Dave Mull, he's insane. And he even when so many big Dave Mull is insane. Yeah, yeah he's exactly. Be a pro. Yeah. He's fucking insane. You yeah. can do a kickflip off his roof into the half pipe. 
Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, that, mm-hmm. that was nuts. Yeah, he does a lot of a lot of crazy roof drops. Or that giant gap off the, off the tree log, that big gap. That's what I log. was going to mention. That's probably the craziest thing I've ever seen him do. Where yeah. he ollied onto um, that stump. Yeah, and, and he, he takes took the, the rest of the gap. He takes oh. the the run up. Yeah. He like runs along the side of the fucking uh, like the dirt wall to like get speed before he jumps on his board. I know. Yeah. Everything about that was insane. Yeah. That dude is. Uh, he goes for it. He's good. Uh, the wild man. Yeah. Speaking of your half of a half pipe, I love the joke where you go, I don't even, I can't even remember if you say it or not, but somebody says to their buddy, so how's your dick feel? It's like, feels pretty good. (laughs) Yeah, it was foreshadowing. Yeah. He knew we were going to have his dick break. (laughs) Perfect foreshadowing. It was genius. (laughs) And then his dick gets torn off, It was foreskin shadowing. It was foreskin shadowing. Yeah, that was one of my that was one of my favorite jokes. Yeah, that worked out great because I I asked around if anyone knew anyone that does like practical special effects. And they're like, oh, I know this guy. He could probably do like a broken arm. And I asked him, I'm like, what do you what you know what do you got laying around? And you got, I want to have like all my friends get injured because I actually have these penises. And I'm like, dude, yeah, <laughs> one of the dudes is gonna have his break his dick. It's, it's perfect. It just like just like Drew Carey. Oh, he broke his dick. Drew Carey, yeah, Drew broke, Carey his dick? broke his dick. Well, he like sprained his dick in in uh, one of the in like one of the seasons of the Drew Carey show. Uh, was he? Was it Mimi that did it? <laughs> yeah, it was Mimi. <laughs> <laughs> <I think Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> she looked at it wrong. You guys know the E.T. broke dick car by the Swirlies? No. Should I check that out? You guys should check it out. They're a Boston band from like the early nineties. One of my favorites. I didn't know they're from Boston. The Swirlies, right? Boston. Swirlies from Boston. From Cambridge. So they must be as good as Aerosmith. Oh, yeah. They're right up there with Aerosmith. Oh, hell yeah. Steven Tyler and the whole gang. Yeah. yeah. Steven Tyler and the whole gang. The whole gang. You got Steven Tyler, and then you got the rest of the gang. And you got the whole gang. You got the whole gang there. Hey, yeah, you got all of them. Yeah. The original name of Aerosmith. Steven Tyler and the whole gang. Mm-hmm. That was but that was before they were free beer. I know a fun fact. Yes. The drummer of Aerosmith, his son, is the drummer of Cobra Man, who made all the music for the Warble. Huh? Bring it all together. Wait a minute. The, the drummer from Cobra Man is the son of of the drummer from Aerosmith. That's right. That is Kramer. crazy. So it's like a son of the mask scenario. Basically, yeah. That's it. Like the movie. The Son of the Mask. Yeah. I'm making connections for you guys. What does Jamie Kennedy play in uh, Cobra Man? <laughs> Lead guitar. Oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. I don't know he's in that band. That's, that's pretty sweet. The Kennedy Experiment. Oh, dude. I don't know why he made that a TV show and not a band. I know it. So what else is up? I mean, not a whole lot. I was just going to mention that we we're making a... I mean... I don't know how busy you are over there with the whole COVID, and I don't know if you can get a filmer, but I was going to mention if you want to send a friend trick for the new video, you still got time. Oh, you got time, bud. It's crunch time, but you got time. Oh, I do. I Yeah, hell yeah. I mean, you, time, when, you, when you need it. I need to, re- I actually, I was going to this week reach out to a Thrasher to see when they could fit the video into their schedule, but usually they're always like backed up. I don't know if things are different. But usually they're backed up like a month or two. So I'm saying about a month or two. Okay. Yeah, of course, man. Just uh, send me a little reminder once in a while. Or I'll, next, every time I skate, I'll just shoot. I did this really weird trick, but I filmed it like vertical on a phone. Oh, classic. Is it that trick that you invented where you just pop the board up and plant both feet on the ground and then jump back on it? Oh, I can do that. Do that it's called a pound plant. It's called what? Pound plant. Pound plant. Oh, I I kept thinking he was saying tom plant. Oh, we could call it a tom plant too. Would that be okay with you, Doug? You could call it a tom plant. Yeah. Yes. No, I did this like I lead to backside pivot, and then I went from the pivot to the crack of the curve, and then balanced in there like a manual. Oh, sick! And then I like popped out. It took me like forty tries. Back oh, yeah. into the transition. 
No, just like on a stupid little curve. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's hard to explain. Yeah, I was picturing you know, a like quarter I pipe a curve, for some reason. You got a curve on a, you know, to a sidewalk, but then there's like a little crack between the curve. Oh, yeah, the little the crack. I went from a pivot and then like, and then I like pivoted back into the little crack and then balanced in there. Mm-hmm. Like did a little manual stall. Yeah, you skate the little it's crack. It's not great. It's not great, but it's never been done before, and it'll be a, a trick exclusive. Yeah, an NBD. That's what we're all about. We're all about the exclusives here. It's an NBD. Yeah. It's an NBD. Yeah. We started calling them actually world premieres. Well, that's perfect. I think that's what I just called them. World premiere trick. Yeah. Hell yeah. You skate the little crack, you get a little joy. That's right. No one skates the crack. <laughs> no it's the one. It's most unskated uh, thing in skateboard. No crack. one's skating the crack. They tell you to stay away from the crack from day one. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I've yeah. ollied over plenty of cracks, you know? But right, you know, that, that's tr- over I'm always uh, passing them by, them. just passing them by. Yeah, I'm not even looking down at once what's you, right below me. Right. Once you learn about the crack, that opens up a whole new. It's like putting on those goggles from the lid. The world just looks different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, where you did know? you guys like uh, me and Big Zell find some of this crack? <laughs> it's everywhere, dude. Oh hell yeah! Perfect. You want the re- you want the retail and retail? Uh, can I take both? I heard that's kind of like that's kind of like uh, well, like quilt tripping. Well, we just got to get some goggles from they live, and we'll flipping, yeah. we'll be able to see them. <laughs> it's kind of like hippie flipping for like Matrix uh, dudes. Get the both pills. Ah, uh, fuck yeah! You know? Yeah, yeah. What are you guys skating these days? Uh, you guys got the trampoline going still in the back, or what? No, the fucking the Warble, Warble boys, boys destroyed it. The Warble <laughs> boys came here and, and they fucking destroyed. They it. ripped it literally in half. Well, that's what you gotta get. Those guys are gnarly. The, yeah, that we didn't know just how gnarly they were until they literally destroyed all of our property. So it started to rip in half. Mm-hmm. To and now it looks like a a huge vagina mm-hmm. in the skin. Right. So one of the guys. Uh, aired into it into the hole of said looking vagina and then had all of us lift up the whole trampoline and he rode away <laughs> well you know, we can start a go fund me and you guys can get a new uh, uh trampoline skin we need a new skin i think we should we we did you know what we made our own half half pipe at the house out of trash Dude, that's rad. That's in the uh, featured in the the latest uh, Fancy Lad Skate Co. Instagram post. We call it the Trash Pipe. Right. Dude, I can't wait to see it. I got to go on the Instagram right now and like it. It's pretty sick. You got your standard PVC pipe in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got your your extended. Uh, and we used the the leftover wood because Man Ramp of Warble came to film a uh, collab <laughs> with us. Which still hasn't been released. I don't know when it's going to go up on Thrasher, but um, we used the extra wood for the run up from when he was here because we had to buy a bunch of wood for the man ramp. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't fly with his own. He doesn't travel with his own uh, three quarter inch plywood slab. He's got a no, no. As rider, you got to have it there for him. Yeah, hopefully he has some sort of membership card to Home Depot. But yeah, he really should or sponsorship. Exactly. That's, that would be sick if he was sponsored by Home Depot. Yeah. <laughs> Same with Matt Tomasello, so he can get all his hinges and springs. <laughs> He's like, I'm on Vans, uh, Element, um, uh, Fancy Lad, and Home Depot. It's hardware. Exactly. Yeah. Springs you, and hinges. Did you use Yell Exit all your sponsors <laughs> and just toss uh, Fancy Lad and Home Depot in there? Oh, I don't know. Sponsors except 10L. Oh, okay. You know, because Ace. I was just naming random random brands. Because Ace uh, Hardware was very specific. <laughs> well, I like to go to Ace because around here during the pandemic, Home Depot there's a line going uh, down the block to get in. They yeah. only let a certain amount of people in, so I go to Ace Hardware. No line, no mess, no fuss. It's because Home Depot has no that uh, that porter potty grade toilet paper that everyone wants. And you don't want the Home Depot hardware because it's Allen key. Mm. You know? Oh, it's all Allen key there, huh? That's yeah, it's all Allen key. But you know, I 
you know, just out of curiosity, I'm just curious. I don't know if I've ever asked you this. Who's your favorite skater? I know that you said you didn't really know Jason Dill that much. Um, Do you have a favorite skater and favorite video, I guess? Like, of all time? Yeah. Um, it's hard to say. I only have, like, one. I mean, I always, like, nodded and gone. And um, then Robbie Mullen. Yeah, classics. And, um, I love the... So, uh, and Neil Blender. Like the blender. Mm-hmm. I love the Nodis part from Streets of Fire, where he skates that yeah, firehouse I mean, song. Yeah, I, I filmed a uh, the other day a uh, you know ollie out to truck bash on a curb in tribute to Nodis because of that part. Oh, dude, I still do that trick. That's a fun trick, truck bash. I like I like when you do like a one. You just tap the, the back truck and you keep moving, so you don't really stop. You just kind of like. Oh, yeah. up a curb and you like you bash the truck real quick and keep going over the curb. Yeah, I remember doing that when we were skating in Boston at that skate park, and there was like a little, little teeny little square with some like pebbles in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah the the I gap that. the gap over the ledge at the uh, Lynch family skate park. That's right. The David Lynch family skate park. That is the one. But some of the newer guys are like I like uh, I like watching uh, Mason Silva. He's pretty. I like watching the Warble guys. I like Matt Tomasello. I like you. I like Big Nick. Whoa! Whoa. Really? And I like Orange Orange Man. I like. I just. I more like just watch. I like. I'm into more of like uh, different. Uh, Your creative crew, skaters. You know? I like. Uh, I like. Yeah. Like I'm a. I like Fancy Land Crew and I like the Warble Crew. Well, you know, from the list of your your favorite skaters that you were listing before, th- those are all a bunch of pioneers. There, you know. We got a lot of people doing, yeah. you know, marching to their own drum, you know, not as blender gone. Yeah. And then he mentioned three of the top fancy lad pros right. who are marching to the beat of their own drum. So exactly. I see a connection here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what you're saying is I'm kind of like Mark Gonzalez. Yep. Matt Tomasello's kind of like not, uh, Rodney Mullen. Right. And Orange Man's kind of like not Yes. That's what you're saying. Hell yeah. Pretty much. All right, there like, you- uh, I don't know. I left some of these. Some of these guys, I forget their name. I don't know. There's some of those dudes that skate like concrete parks with incredible speed and style, and they don't wear pads and they're like playing insane. Um, I can't remember any of their names right now. Got to have a lot of confidence. Yeah. Got to have a lot of confidence. Okay, Must be nice. Name. Need the confidence for that. Mm-hmm. Something I've never had. Mm-hmm. Like Ben Red Redburn. That's Redborn. Um, are you, uh, uh, oh, Ben, Ben Rayburn, Ben Rayburn. Yeah. The guy who skates for birdhouse. Ben yeah. Rayburn. Yeah. Yeah. He used to be on 1031 like skateboards with Matt Tomasello. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Well, there you go. Yeah. Small skateboard world. That tells you. Oh yeah. So guys, I got to hang up pretty soon. That's perfect. Any final question? Yeah, no, my last question was if you had any more questions for us. Oh, what's next for Fantasyland? Oh, I'm glad you asked, you know. Well, you know, after this video comes out, you know, I was thinking you would write a show for us, mm-hmm. of course, and, you know. Produce it. Produce it. Direct it. Executive produce. Yeah, exactly. All the money and, and the, like the work and stuff. You could edit it as well. Yeah. Sound, lighting. And uh, yeah, we'll star in it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and you okay. don't worry. We'll worry about the money coming in and we'll divvy it up as we see fit. Mm-hmm. How's that sound? Okay. Yeah. You guys just take you get the money and uh, you might cut or turn up. And, you know. Yeah. I'm sure it'll all work out. All right. Well, well I. Fun. Considering that we're going to publish that, I consider it a binding contract, and I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. And don't worry, we're going to have our number one math scientists looking at these all this money things, and uh, make sure everyone's getting what they deserve. Yeah, we're binding. We're cool with that. I'm oh, cool hell with yeah. the binding. Hell yeah! yeah. Yes. We're locked. We're locked. Locked and loaded. Well, Doug, yeah. it was just a pleasure talking to you. Fucking legend, DJ Doug Pound. I got to say, you're probably the most high-profile guest that we've ever had. Maybe the last high-profile guest we ever have. That's true. Well, that's just, uh, that's just tickles me pink. Pink, so to say. But uh, you know... You guys are 
You guys are my gay heroes of the decade, okay? So, yes. Yes, we have that right? on record. Yes. yes. Which decade we talk? We talk in uh, we talk in 2010 to 2020. Yeah, 2010 to 2020. And makes the rest is remained. 20 to 30. Oh, oh yeah. yeah! We fucking did it. <laughs> I'm predicting that the next decade. I'm glad you didn't wow. predict our dicks getting ripped off. Yeah, that foreskin shadowing. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I, got, I got one, question. one final question for you guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How's your dick? Feels pretty good. Yeah, it does feel pretty good, actually. Yeah. Okay, we'll see how that works out. I'm okay, I don't foresee any issues coming up. But yeah. All right, Doug. You have yourself a good night. Trust right. me, we'll we'll get we'll get out to the West Coast soon enough. And you know, if you ever come out to the East Coast on that, uh, uh, you were gonna tour for something. I remember. Maybe it was Pound House or something. Yeah, hopefully I'll be out there. Hopefully, you know, we just talked last time. We'll be out there soon. We'll you know, come up here anytime. We're COVID friendly. We're 420 friendly and we're COVID friendly. Come on out whatever. All right, 420 friendly and COVID friendly. You heard it here first. Mm, that's what I like to hear, baby. Hey, what are your thoughts on 69? Are you 69 friendly? <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you, Doug. <laughs> All right, yep. Doug. Well, I'll talk to you later. I'll I'll be sure to text you to send a friend trick. Yeah, just talk to you about that. I will. I will get to that. All right. Thanks again. Thanks for calling in. Hey, thanks, Doug. Really appreciate it. Later, bud. All right. Later. Oh God, what a guy! What a guy! And what are the odds that someone that we mentioned actually like felt that and called? I know that was really weird. And I'm glad that I mentioned the pound cast mm-hmm. because it happened to work out. But I was really pulling for Joe Rogan. Dude, I know. Because I'm a huge news radio fan. Honestly, I mean, you saw the whole time I've been snacking on spiders, just (laughs) trying to get ready for... Because, I mean, clearly, if Doug Pound heard us and called (laughs) in, then someone as measly and and pathetic as Joe Rogan should be able to do it. I know. Well, you know, I would have settled for Andy Dick, but I just don't know Mm. if he has a podcast. Mm. Man, I don't know. Well, we we should get him on this one. Yeah, we should. Do you got his contact? I do, yeah. Oh, dude, he actually has a cameo. We should hit him up and try to get him on here. We'll pay we top should. dollar just to ask him. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Something hurts between my legs. Dude, what is it? Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, your dick. Oh, just oh my God. Off. Oh, dude, what's happening to you? Dude, oh, my dick just no. fell off. No, damn you, oh, Doug. 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 Uh, yeah. <laughs>